Fallout as an IP is adored by many. It's made people get tattoos of a man with his thumb up on their body parts. And once a year, it gets people to travel to these scorching lands of Las Vegas to dress up in open carry foam weapons. Also, some hate the IP because they adore it. Love is complicated. If you want a speed run of what type of Fallout fan a person is, ask them which they prefer between three New Vegas and four. And then prepare for an earful from the guy who says New Vegas because you're in for a nerdy app session. I would know because I've done it myself. This TV's old. You dipshits don't have a flat screen. Peak Fallout is some of the best gaming of all time. Not to play. It actually sucks a lot to play for some people. By peak gaming, I mean sitting down and listening to NPCs tell stories and drop hard quotes that you could turn into a TikTok edit. You stay right there. I will talk about you later. But when you actually do something unique, then those NPCs will now yap about what you did, which makes you go, wait, you actually mess with me like that? I'm tapped in now. And yeah, I did kill that guy earlier. Fallout 1 and 2 are some of the best role-playing games of all time, taking place in the post-apocalyptic wasteland where the choices you make and the stuff you say matter in the rebuilding age of America. The president of the United fucking States of America. Yeah. Who do you think I was talking about? Who the fuck? Who is it? What? I should kick your fucking ass. But then after the first two games, Black Isle, the studio that made the games, filed for bankruptcy and sold the IP to Bethesda. Bethesda made Fallout 3, adding their unique spin to the Fallout identity, and made it one of the most iconic games of all time by just visual style and accessibility alone, since it was a first person slash third person shooter game. So even if you have never played a Fallout game, you know this guy, and this guy, and this suit, and this robot, and this cool piece of ice on your wrist. I call the chandelier. Then after Fallout 3, they let Obsidian, which had a lot of the original guys who made Fallout Fallout 2 borrow the IP, and then they cooked up one of the best RPG games ever made. So yeah, Fallout is really big. Then Fallout 4 came, it was pretty sometimes with the best combat and had fun retro futurism. But regardless of quality, no one can argue that Fallout isn't cool to look at and take in. Apocalypse mixed with futuristic retro tech with some throwback 50s music. It's a cool style. It also kind of makes no sense sometimes, and I lied, people find it really annoying. But this video is about the Fallout show released by Amazon. Known for the show with Goran superheroes, and the cartoon with Goran superheroes. And right now there's a lot of buzz around the Fallout show in good ways and some bad ways. Which is not surprising, because if there's two things that got a divisive combo, it's Fallout and video game adaptations. I may go eat a A year ago, I put my heart and soul into a flop video uh, about The Last of Us, and for a big section of that video, I talked about video game adaptations and the history of why a lot of them were bad and cash grabs. TLDR, video games are fun and cool because I like the game and get mad and smash my TV. But some people don't like that. So you get some actors, put them in a little box, and grandma starts to clap like a seal. <laughs> The reason I bring this up is a lot of people don't like video game adaptation shows because most of the time it could feel like they're just wearing cosplay with no care of the source materials universe. But for Fallout, people have felt the sentiment with the games themselves since Bethesda acquired the IP, embracing this retro futurism aesthetic without care for world building or immersive roleplay. Some like the high quality Fallout that takes its time to present ideologies, giving a choice in a rich world of politics, beliefs, and immense depth. And like I said in the Starfield video, some are okay with a linear Disneyland ride that doesn't have so much depth and attention to detail. So so the stakes of the Fallout show are really important depending on how you adapt it. Because while Bethesda choose to be a Disneyland ride, they still share the same continuity of Fallout 1, 2, and New Vegas. But Fallout 3 is in Washington, and Fallout 4 is in Boston, and 76 is in West Virginia, which is nowhere near California or the Mojave. So even if you don't like Bethesda's games, at least they got their own puddle to splash in without affecting the West. And don't forget about me! Min, 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 min. The Fallout show is in California, which is also Fallout HQ. So which Fallout are they adapting? Mickey Mouse Ride or Game of Thrones? After one Watching the Fallout show from beginning to end, I felt weird. Like Fallout 3, the show is a commercial success with high ratings and praise, which I completely understand because like Fallout 3, which regressed a lot from Fallout 2, the vibe of Fallout alone could be enough to wow people who aren't familiar with its history. And if you're like me, who grew up post Bethesda acquisition, getting into the franchise with 3 or 4, not diving into the other Fallout games, it has a lot of that Fallout look you loved. Most of the complaints people will have with the show are going to be one or the other. Normal people and even casual Fallout fans don't know a lot about the NCR or the Brotherhood of steel and shady sands probably sounds like a nursery home that you stick grandma in so who gives a shit that i got bombed if the show's a fun time it's a fun time and at times it could be a fun time i'm not the grinch some of the artistic designs of bethesda's fallout 4 are really good like the retro futurism of vault tech in comparison to the rundown ugly look of the vaults that were shown in fallout 3 in new vegas and power armor being a real mechanical iron man suit than just a cosmetic with stats and even fallout 4 i like how diamond city looks and how rundown boston looks post bombing it makes no sense and is kind of dumb 
dumb, but it's pretty to walk around nonetheless. And for the first six episodes of the Fallout show, I was really digging it. I disconnected my brain forgetting that we were in California and took in the fun little story that was being told, full of Fallout branding like certain beer brands and sugar bombs and all the cute little things that you could find in the games. The perspective of the Vault Dwellers were funny as well, and the sets and costumes were fantastic. The action was shot well, the gore was nice, and the music from other Fallout mediums set the atmosphere greatly. The details to the games were really cemented here. It didn't feel like a cheap fan film or something wearing the mask of Fallout. You could tell that the showrunners really cared about the Fallout IP, wanting to really nail down the iconicism. Even some of the actors looked at Let's Plays of the games or played it themselves to really get into that role. I wanted to get the absolute most out of this experience, and I think you have to deeply, deeply respect the source material. This is a big deal because a lot of adaptations are insecure to appeal to the video game world of what they're adapting, and will try to steer away from it, like Super Mario Bros. back in the day, uh, Resident Evil, and even most recently, Halo. There's so much I like about the Fallout show. If it was a dumpster fire, I wouldn't even talk about it and just move on crying on Twitter or something when I wasn't retweeting Luka Doncic clips. I don't think this show is a soulish cash grab made in bad faith, but I also don't think it's a 9 of 10 at all and suffers from a sprinting narrative rather than a marathon that has caused some really bad world building and destruction of previous world building from older games. The best parts of the Fallout show is when it's disconnected from the overall twist plot and just stays character focused, being low stakes but still personal with multiple perspectives that teach us about the world. Like Lucy, the naive vault dweller on the surface learning the doggy dog customs of the wasteland. Then you have her brother Norm being the perspective of the vault dwellers and how sheltered and disconnected they are from the real world, making them all soft and naive. You then got Maximus, who is the perspective of the Brotherhood of Steel. Uh, he's the weakest part of the show, not gonna lie. The Brotherhood of Steel being kind of chopped doesn't help this either. Also, the Prid one's coming from Boston, which if you if you like Fallout 4, I guess that kind of retcons some stuff. Maximus also has some of the worst lines in the show. They're so bad that in my own little like brain rot mind, they're, they're pretty funny to me. You mean use my cock? You wanna make my cock explode? <laughs> And then we got the ghoul, Cooper Howard being a veteran perspective of the wasteland, as well as a window to learn about the old world. Off the back, the ghoul is the best character in the show, hands down. So much so that you could have made the whole series around him and have it work. He's that much of a cool concept. The great thing about a property like Fallout is that it's similar to something like Star Wars, both being a cluster of homages that allow versatility to tell tons of stories in one sandbox. It could be Mad Max, then a chessboard power play drama, and then a badass western, but also it could be serious tackling philosophy, sociology, politics, politics, discrimination. There's a lot of things to sink your teeth into. Game of Thrones had dragons and sword fights and cool medieval shit, but the thing that always stood out the most about those good four seasons were the writing and world building. The ghoul brings western to Fallout, similar to how the Mandalorian once brought back western to Star Wars. A gunslinger with a past that makes you question how he got there, but every time he's on screen he steals the room. But besides the badass exterior of this gunslinger, Cooper Howard brings the best world building to the Fallout show. Lucy's personal problems and trust in nature can happen for a short period period, but after that culture shock ends, Lucy should stop being in Mad Max and instead elevate to those higher levels of Fallout problems, where she explores deeper into the power holds and factions and whatnot. But Cooper's a ghoul, and being a ghoul opens discrimination since ghouls are disliked and can be unpredictable going feral at any moment, so it makes sense that he's not in modern civilization, but rather a cockroach. And with how ghouls have been retconned to now require anti-radiation to prevent going feral, you now have this ghoul trying to chase the dollar so he could buy his cure to stay sane, which means you got a western Mad Max story without it feeling unnatural, and now Lucy could be in it against her will if she was to get like kidnapped or something. Yeah, the ghoul thing is a problem on paper, but ghouls have been getting messed up since even Fallout 4 with Billy the Kid. Not excusing it, they're just bigger fish to fry, I, I, I could let it slide I guess. Also, Cooper being a ghoul means that he was also alive before the bombs dropped. And to add even more depth, he was also a famous actor involved with vault -Tec. Which raises that question to the audience, how did he get here? How did a famous celebrity that then worked with vault -Tec end up being a degenerate gunslinger and not being a vault himself? And when Lucy Lucy's with Cooper, they contrast each other. One is new to the wasteland with a pure heart and mind, and the other is fully corrupted. Even at some point, Lucy questions his savagery about why he wants to live anymore. But when we get flashbacks of Cooper, we see that he wasn't always this way. Cooper had a lovely family and was the cowboy good guy, even fighting with his producer, not wanting to kill his on-screen villain since it's something a hero wouldn't do. But when he's pushed into it, he folds. Cooper's flashbacks gives world building to how society collapsed even before the bombs fell, and how Cooper was a part of that problem, like how he gave into being 
being a gunslinging killer on screen, he stopped being the good guy altogether, selling the end of the world for a dollar, getting richer than ever with something he didn't even fundamentally trust or agree with. And this development ties into the best part of the show. Baiting Lucy for his own benefit, she breaks his medicine. This is when we see Cooper go looking for more, where he sees a friend doing the same thing. He kills his friend that is turning feral and then salvaged his meat, where Lucy says, what's the point of wanting to live like this? Then after selling Lucy's life for his own life, he's on the brink of turning feral. Lucy, close to being harvested by a Mr. Handy, breaks free and lets out all the trapped ghouls, including both the normal ones and the feral ones that she has to put down, where she learns about their condition. Now, understanding Cooper's desperation for survival, this is where we see the contrast difference of Lucy and Cooper. After being harmed by Cooper with his eye for an eye mentality and used for his own selfish gain, she has now escaped and defended herself while helping others. Faced with him now, she still keeps empathy for the person who harmed her after being told she will eventually be just like him. After this, we then see Cooper take part in gluttony, eating his heart out in a pathetic-like way. He then finds his old film, where he was the good guy cowboy. He then pops it in, seeing how that cowboy got corrupted to being a sellout gunslinger. Then we cut back to him, seeing that this is now his reality. We then get a flashback where Cooper has now full-on become a puppet of alt -Tech. Demonized by Hollywood and others around him, he seeks out validation from someone who has done the same. An actor who sold the likeness of his voice from a popular character, where they then have a discussion about how selfishness is the way to go. Uh, Hollywood actor friends, I want to be seen celebrating with the pitch man for the end of the world. But you, my friend, you know which way the wind is blowing. And it's that. A world run by people who wear pocket protectors to a pool party. I mean, I've dipped my bits in the same gravy train. Sell my vocal rights to that spinning robot they sell to housewives and perverts. Listen to me. Hollywood is the past. Forget Hollywood. The future, my friend, is products. You're a product, I'm a product. The end of the world is a product. And for those of us who can successfully embrace that, I'd say the future is golden. To the future. To the future. Then you cut to both their futures, the ghoul who only has himself, and his friend who is the broken Mr. Handy, which is now the only trace left of him to the future. It's brilliant television. The world isn't ending. You're not fighting an empire like government. It's grounded with the characters being the center of attention, with the world only being a backdrop. The first six episodes are flooded with moments like these, but then the show folds on itself by rushing and taking massive overbites when it didn't need to. The reason The Mandalorian collapsed as a show was because it became ungrounded and tried to juggle the entire universe in a once simple bounty hunter dad show. Instead of just focusing on The Mandalorian as an individual and have him progress in his own Western, he got turned into an extra in a Star Wars MCU plan, where now every important important figure knows him and he's helping against the largest threats ever and the show became fast food. It's why world building is so important because we've seen many times in other medias where when the world building collapses so does the show. Like I said earlier, Game of Thrones being the most popular example. And I feel in the instance right now, bad world building has not only ruined the Fallout show but has also ruined Fallout entirely in some ways. Like the Mandalorian comparison, the best part about Fallout is the aftermath. Lore and events are all history that led to where the world is now. You could hear about the past and theorize how events played out but everyone is in the fallout and now the fallout is a new thing entirely full of conflicts and stories every fallout story is a subjective narrative in the overall world the Enclave could be a threat and now you're fighting them. The Institute could be a threat in Boston and now you have the Railroad and the Minutemen and you're just some normal guy who has a personal conflict about getting your son. Your dad is also from the vault and is now in some war about water and the Enclave and Brotherhood are beefing. Hey, bruh. Yeah. Or you're just a courier that got caught in a bad situation now learning about a bunch of man-made factions who all want to control a dam. Everything is so Mickey Mouse because at the end of the day, humans just like power and control and will always start conflict. Everyone has moved on from the bombings. It's been over 200 years, life is just normal now. And there are governments and factions and politics and allegiances and power vacuums. All main conflicts are man-made conflicts, which means no matter what, moving forward, you continue to develop and enrich these man-made conflicts. It's why the Brotherhood is always different in each game, because each chapter that represents them could be different. It still though, doesn't excuse how annoying it is that they're always a mega faction though. Stuff like this is common within post-apocalyptic worlds. Planet of the Apes, for example. Even something like The Last of Us and The Last of Us 2, where you play as the literal cure for humanity ends up being all about Mickey Mouse human drama. Mad Max Fury Road's main conflict is that a warlord gatekeeps water from the locals. This could be a Fallout side mission. Most Fallout plots involve water. I say all this because extremely unnecessary high stakes storytelling annoys me. The Fallout show began to collapse for me when the plot twist made the stakes so high to the point where the world building of the previous games had to be sacrificed for it to exist in the show. Fans keep trying to fight about the timeline of the bombing of Shady Sands to see if it retcons New Vegas and while it does matter 
matter, Shady Sands getting Bond in general affects New Vegas and the future of Fallout no matter what. The new King of Shady Sands is a loss for storytelling in every way for everyone. By nuking Shady Sands, you now eradicate the nuance and power of Fallout in California because now the NCR are no longer a large power and are just remnants like the Enclave. And somehow no one has sucked up this power vacuum until the Brotherhood of Steel do? The asshole for Mr. Robot says it's to rebuild the Brotherhood and get power. When has this ever been the motivating factor for the Brotherhood of Steel in California? They used to have ideologies and beliefs and were weak, but now they're a strong military that came from the East Coast that act like the Enclave and kill anything in sight. The world is so lawless again. The whole point of the NCR was that it was pretty much the new government of the world. In New Vegas, it said that they are 700,000 strong and have branched out to other states. It's why they are even in the Mojave to begin with, to get resources from the dam. It's why they won over the Brotherhood of Steel, because as Mr. House said, they got overpowered 15 to 1. But now they lost their HQ and are somehow a rebellion? No matter what, the NCR, even after just losing its capital, should still be the largest force in California by just pure numbers. California shouldn't be a busted ass hellhole only full of scattered scavenger murderers. They could exist, but there should also be rangers and military. Even with the Shady Sand survivors in a vault now, the NCR were large enough to be stable in California. They were just spreading thin in other places like the Mojave. The NCR represents civilization building up again. In New Vegas, it's a big reason why Caesar does not like them. Greed runs rampant. The government is corrupt, accepting bribes from Brahmin barons and landowners to the detriment of citizens. It's not built to last. I'm just hastening the inevitable. The NCR has flaws and conflicts, people have opinions against them, and if the NCR were to fall or be overthrown, there's so much nuance to how it could happen, since there's so many oppositions to them and their beliefs. But not letting a conflict play out against them in a political war or battle, but rather just destroying them so we could go back to Mad Max roleplay is lazy and a cop-out, and it ruins Vault-Tec as well. Like I said earlier, the low stakes of the NCR is that they could have competition like Caesar's Legion, or the Brotherhood of Steel gain power someday and then overthrow them. But now all conflict does not matter in Fallout if you have a big shadow group pulling the strings, which is now vault -Tec. Before this, the largest big bad was the Enclave, which was built from the remnants of a normal government who ruled with an iron fist. The highest stakes about the Enclave was them wanting to clear all population that was not Enclave and rebuild in the vision they saw perfect. Even though the Enclave was close to the modern government, they had different ideologies wanting to be pure with no outsiders. They would kill settlers, vault dwellers, they weakened the Brotherhood of Steel, they kidnapped people to run experiments on them. They monitored the vaults and would even kidnap people from their vaults. They were infatuated with going to space someday and living on other planets, so all these experiments and bio weapons made sense for them to be interested in. But while they tried to be sneaky and stay off the grid, they were still sloppy. And at the end of the day, the Enclave were not shadow people and flew too close to the sun and got demolished and now don't have power. The Enclave have had many beefs with many factions and wanted to do crazy shit. So why are we making vault -Tec pretty much the Enclave now with stupid shadow people power? End of the day, the Enclave was a faction with extreme ideologies, same as Caesar's Legion. They could be seen as the bad guy to some, but some of the stuff they do can have truth behind it or logical reasoning. Even if you don't agree with them, you know why they believe it themselves. It's a reason why Fallout fans hate that you can never side with the Enclave. But with vault -Tec, now there's no nuance. These guys are easily the big bad. vault -Tec was always seen as a company that was rooted in problems of deep capitalism. With each vault having unique gimmicks, testing its residents both physically and psychologically, to medicine, durability, resilience, and social experiments. vault -Tec was a failure company that didn't work since people survived the nuclear blast. And all these guinea pigs didn't mean anything either, since the Enclave would also soon fall. But the good eggs of the vaults would fulfill their missions, and create settlements and factions and stuff snowballed. But overall, most vaults failed and vault -Tec became history. The failure of the Enclave was the failure of vault -Tec. The experiments make more sense if the Enclave had fascination with going to space rather than saving America, making the pitch of vault -Tec just propaganda for money. Investing in a vault is equivalent to a rich person getting property because they can, but now done in the vein of safety. This is why so many people already theorized before it was confirmed that vault -Tec dropped the nukes, down from the logos to the bombs that didn't detonate in both Fallout 3 and New Vegas, to the illogical correlations of the Enclave's motives, that are also now shared by vault -Tec and the Fallout show. But in the Fallout show, vault -Tec is still around and now has power, making them a faction before when they were just lore and branding. So the Enclave, which is a modern government, fails because of radicalism wanting to cleanse the wasteland, is replaced by a stable government, being the NCR, started by vault dwellers, is then nuked by vault Tech, who is now confirmed to also nuke the world because a guy was upset his wife left the vault to live in society, started by vault dwellers, like they were supposed to, and now he wants to get rid of all factions because he sees it as ideal that vault dwellers rebuild the new world themselves, even though vault Tech has failed twice, with the original bomb drops and the failure of the Enclave, which got the NCR built, 
Volt and the NCR are literally his vision because it was started by Vault Dwellers. It's just running in circles for no reason. But unlike the Enclave, Vault Tech can just bomb shit on a whim if they feel like it. So why establish factions or governments if they can now get snapped away in an instant? Why does anything in Fallout even matter anymore? If you have an evil force that nuked the world causing the Fallout to begin with and they have the elite of the elites in cryopods scheming shit and can still nuke the world whenever they want, what other conflicts matter? You don't need to fight over a dam or clean water or do anything now because you have the Empire as your main conflict. All that time establishing world building, conflicting factions, connections, and beef are just undone by a mega power that has always existed somehow. And for a show narrative, do you find this cool? I'm legit asking you to comment your thoughts about this. In the world of Fallout, where all antagonists could be subjective to your choosing from your beliefs to ideology and outside factors, is having an evil force that is going to make everyone practically form a rebellion where they have an endgame collab to fight and destroy vault since the ghoul is attached to this main plot with his family, and Lucy is attached to this main plot with her family, and Maximus is attached to this main plot since they killed his family. A cool direction. I mean, like, how many times have we seen this, like, rebellion type story? And it's already happening. Like, A New Hope starts with a droid that has intel to help the rebellion and the first order has a droid with intel to stop the resistance and now a traitor to the enclave that have suddenly returned has the most powerful energy ever and you have to chop off its head and get it to the remnants of the ncr which are pretty much now the rebellion who are fighting the empire and the brotherhood of steel who are just shoehorned into this plot it's just uh i don't know maybe i'm just burnt out on this stuff like i said with the mandalorian the shit i love most about it was in season one when every episode there's something to learn about baby yoda and we didn't know what the hell was going on besides this irrelevant bounty hunter giving up his life to be a dad and struggling with religion but then big characters got involved and now everything means so much to save the world same reason why i like daredevil just a guy fighting a corrupt politician and not saving the universe like i love new vegas so much because like i said earlier nothing matters it's the mojave a boring ass sand place but this mickey mouse conflict has so much detail like the good springs battle was such a good introduction that i still remember it to this day when i think about that game so much happens in that game the mindset of the ncr mr house's personality caesar's legion for such low stakes, they all have so much depth and has created some of the best characters ever. Like Joshua Graham, who I said I would mention, he's a guy that was set on fire by Caesar and is now extremely religious, maybe to a bad degree may be good. That's the fun thing about Fallout. All this nothingness is so deep that it has made so many people echo batshit insane ideologies. Or are they not batshit? Oh, it's a dog whistle. That's where discussion happens and people form personalities depending on what house you side with. It can get toxic, but that's just cool to me. And I know you can't roleplay and have 200 hours of depth where you learn every detail about some dumb farmer's life in a TV show, but those small character moments were so nice. The ghoul was awesome when it tackled how much he's fallen from who he used to be, or how Lucy is naive and new to this world, but how possibly the wasteland could change her. I love the dilemma of the vault dwellers being so sheltered that it made everyone be naive and massive cowards, but Norm wants to do something about it, so he conflicts with all the settlers and the humor to present this was just so funny. Like, they all almost died because of human error being so diluted and trusting. It makes sense that Vault Dwellers would be seen as prey to be dug out by raiders, but now that's gutted because it was actually the NCR trying to save everyone by kidnapping Fallout Darth Vader, even though that means they also killed innocent people and were willing to kill the leader's friend's daughter. Also, are these raiders or the NCR? They act like beasts for a second, then some guy locks in and drops a bar, which means that they're not stupid. Like, what are they? I got no idea, though. The acting was good, the sets were nice, Nice. Music was cool. Uh, got no idea what's gonna happen in season two though. By going to New Vegas, everything has to be different. Either it's wiped clean or nothing mattered, or you have to canonize an ending, which is a lose lose as well. I think the biggest misstep of the show is bringing Bethesda's East Coast playground to the West. I mean, they already brought the Pridwin, which is now canonized that the you can't shoot down the Pridwin. So it's like when you do stuff like this, you just create so much conflict and overlap. I still think 100% confirming that Vault Tech dropped the bombs and could now do it again is a problem for low stake stuff. Nothing matters anymore. End of this day, this video is a bunch of nerds. Shit. I like the Fallout games a lot and I like the quality of the show, but I just wish it was contained story without having to be so big. Like in Red Dead 2, Arthur and the gang aren't destroying the government. You can have self contained stories and sandbox guys. You don't always gotta fight the Empire and save the world. I don't know though. What, what do you think about the show? Comment down whatever feelings you have. Uh, so subscribe if you wanna see more Fallout stuff. Could always replay New Vegas. Also, like the video. Uh, I'm done begging. I'm gonna make a Guinness or something. Where you go, a man she's anything but calm. Regular pint size, I had them bomb.